everybody. Welcome to Housing Wire Daily. I am James Kleiman, the managing editor, filling in for Sarah Wheeler today. And we are joined by Bill Conroy, senior reporter at Housing Wire. And we're going to talk about a few pretty big subjects in the housing space. One, bank failures. Two, mortgage rates and their expected movement. Three, the health of the independent mortgage banks. And four, how 2023 is shaping up. Stick with us. This is Sarah Wheeler, Editor-in-Chief at HW Media, talking with Matt Dowd, Vice President of Product Management at ICE Mortgage Technology, about mortgage automation. Matt, how does automated underwriting help the housing industry in general, especially with getting more people into homes? Well, there's a few ways that I can see how accelerating this process helps more people get into a home. First off, by reducing the time required to process loan applications and providing faster loan approval times and really making more accurate lending decisions that should help more people get into homes. You know, the quicker and consistent decisioning actually increases the likelihood of approval so that when we run across life events and such, which happen during any of the process and could change the borrower's circumstances. So by implementing the process in uh, technology, you know, and creating these speeds and efficiencies, I think lenders can focus more time on attracting more borrowers, which should result in more closed loans and ultimately provide more opportunities for people to become homeowners. Great points. And listeners, you can find out more at icemortgagetechnology.com. I am joined by Bill Conroy, the senior mortgage reporter here at Housing Wire. Bill, we got a lot to cover. It's been really, I mean, it's been like the craziest year in mortgage, arguably in, in you know, maybe since the last year that it was also crazy for very different reasons. And, uh, but I want to get to so much stuff because we've had bank failures. We've had lots of consolidation in the industry. We've had reports about IMBs going under. We've had, you know, lots of speculation about where rates are going to be. So, so much to cover. I want to start out really with, with, uh, you know, the bank failures. So I believe it's March 10th that Silicon Valley Bank goes under. And then two days later, New York based Signature Bank suffers the same fate. Regular, regulators take it over. You know, there's a bank run. Depositors don't know if they're going to be reimbursed, you know, many of which I, I think would have good reason to think that the federal government wouldn't rescue them, right? You know, because the FDIC does have a limit on, on deposits. And, you know, it's, it's kind of a crazy, crazy month, right? And, and there's this fear of contagion that what happened to these two banks could happen to all kinds of other banks. And, and this would affect the mortgage industry because, as you know, everything is interconnected, right? So why don't we start there? Maybe could, could you start with, with you know, explaining what happened? The federal government has a strategy to take over the affected banks, the guarantee deposits, it calms everything down. But how have the independent mortgage banks that you know, are, are the vast majority of the mortgage business in America at this point, how are they affected by these bank failures? Well, um, like everything, it's complicated. Uh, and I'll try to boil down what I was told. This is based on uh, interviews I've done recently and stories with a number of, of industry experts, um, in, 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 you know, including David Stevens, who's a consultant, he used to run the MBA and, and uh, head of, you know, the, uh, some of the banking, independent banking uh, associations uh, <clears throat> and some of their experts as well as just, you know, industry players in the secondary market and mortgage lenders, right? I've, I've been talking and, and you know, getting consensus is, is difficult in the industry and, you know, predicting the future is nearly impossible. But what appears to be at least uh, happening now, uh, at least some somewhat of a, a, I would say, a consensus is that the, the banking uh, um, crisis, can we call it that? actually might benefit in, in, in more than hurt the IMB industry. Um, and uh, this is why, and, and we're seeing it, our, we're seeing it already with, with rates. Now rates, you know, have, have dropped close to half a point, right? If we look at what's coming out today, if we're looking at the 30 year. It's like 6.1 right now, you know, I think it was, it was about yeah. seven a month ago, right? Yeah, and it I depends mean, where you measure it from. Wrong. Like I look at the Freddie thirty year, but there's different, as you know, and then there's the actual what's out in the market. But it, but the the ratios are the same, so it it's dropped precipitously, and 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 in part of why that's that's happening. I mean, nobody can really predict rates, but part of why it's expected that it's happening is what's with the banks. It's really affected. The, the smaller and mid-sized banks, the large money center banks, the, you know, the top 
25 largest huge banks in the country. They've actually, they're, they're seeing deposit inflows. People are flocking to them because they see them as safer, right? Um, and they're, they're just, for whatever reason, the banking industry and the regulators let this kind of kind of slip by, but there, there just started to be a big pile up of uninsured deposits to a lot of these banks uh, for various reasons. Cost of funds, cost of deposits for the banks are really low. So the banks are kind of getting hit with a double whammy where you got deposit fear, right? Depositor fear uh, in, in some of the reason there's, they're over the limits is a lot of these, they're like payroll accounts and business accounts. So they're, 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 they're just more than the $250,000 insured amount, right? So those, those right. These are moms and pops, you know. Most yeah, they could be mom and pop businesses. Customers. Exactly. And, 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 you know, there's been a, a deposit outflow from these smaller community to mid-sized banks, uh, some of it to money market funds, a lot of it, some of it to the bigger banks. So that's going on, a, a deposit bleed, though it's slowed down some. Um, at the same time, the cost of funds, the cost of deposits is going up because because of the interest rate environment. It's been, you know, banks are always slow to, to, to raise the for various reasons, obvious reasons, it costs them more. But they're having to do it now to, to, to attract deposits. So they're, they're, they're feeling a net margin squeeze because of that reason that everyone pretty much expects will lead to a lending contraction in, in the banking industry. They're going to pull in their horns. Um, and uh, Goldman Sachs said that, it has the equivalent effect of a, a, a 25 to 50 basis point rate hike, right, on the economy. And so the prediction is the Fed's done. And the markets are kind of showing that, you know, I mean, the rallies, that, that's, I mean, there seems to be, now no one knows the Fed could, can do what, it, what it's going to do. It's looking at a lot of things, a lot, you know, the economic figures. But basically, there is some, some, some strong argument that the Fed is done, and that's why we're seeing this rate rally. Um, and that's going to lead to, yeah, more mortgages. If it continues there, the prediction is it could get as low as 5.3% by year's end and into the 4% range next year. And there's even a formula, uh, Stevens pointed out that the, the spread between the 10 year treasury and, and the, um, uh, 30 year rate, 30 year mortgage rate is, is like been well 300 basis points when it should be half that. And if you if you look at that and and cut a, a point and a half off of uh, um, you know where rates are now, you get down to you know the the five even the the high fours at the, at this point. And he says the reason that, that 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 there's such a huge spread right now is there's so much volatility in the market, and a lot of that is being caused by the Fed and its rate hiking campaign and the whole unpredictability of how fast, when, and how much, right? Right, and the jobs, the health of the economy, and, and and so many other factors. Yeah, so once once they stop, game game changes big time. And particularly if they think we're sliding into a recession and they start, you know, to slowly pull rates down a bit, although the indicators are now that that, that might, that's not expected to happen this year. But the point is, even if they stop, the, it, just, it just takes so much volatility out of the market. And it, and it's, you know, it's, it's kind of locks in, allows the, the, the rates, the mortgage rates to settle in, uh, should allow them to settle in where they really should be. So we, sh you know, the MBA is predicting 5.3% by year's end. Right. That's and we know huge. from consumer behavior that the, the likelihood that somebody is going to pursue, maybe not a refi, given how many people, you know, refied in, in 2020 and 2021, but we know that that means the purchase market could really boom in the fives, whereas it just it's not possible in the sixes when so many of the individual housing markets, you know, that the cost of finance is so high. You know, home prices, even if they go down a little bit, they're not going to be dropping down enough to make up for rates being in the sixes, right? It's just you, you, <laughs> wages aren't going up, right? So that's not going to happen. And so for an IMB, you know, I, I think really that speaks to kind of what is the future health of the industry, right? And so how healthy do the the experts, the, the Dave Stevens of, of the industry, see the independent mortgage banks right now as, as things stand? Well, that's the other side of the coin. And there always is, right? There's the, the you know, the heads is lower rates. The tails is watch these three things. One, as the banking industry suffers, a lot of the, the warehouse lines that are used to fund mortgages in the IMB market come from, you know, mid-sized regional banks that are being affected by this lending contraction pressure. So to the extent that 
they pull in, you know, their horns on warehouse lines that impacts the the IMB industry. Now, there's a lot of warehouse lenders. It's it's tends to be a pretty lucrative line for banks. So, you know, the thought was, at least from some folks I talked to, that it's not the first thing that these banks are going to contract. But, you know, it may happen on the margins and there may be some warehouse lenders that, you know, have to reassess or possibly merge. I mean, there are some warehouse lenders that are being looked at uh, in terms of their their position, their liquidity positions versus their their deposits, you know, and, and where everything's headed. And to that point, Bill, I, I mean, we we know that the warehouse lending has already been down, right? Because it's directly tied to the amount of volume that that these you know lenders, the IMBs, are are expected to produce. You know, and nobody's going to increase their capacity if they're looking at a fifty percent decrease in origination. So you know, it, everyone is affected. Well, and to that point. Um, that's the other thing happening that that's probably the well the biggest the biggest shoe to drop the industry is still according to more than one person that that looks at this uh it needs to right size yet it's not it's 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 probably you know one one guy I talked to said it needs to still shrink by half in terms of employees right um well that might be extreme but it 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 certainly is not at the right size now for the fact that we had a four, 4.2, 4.4 trillion dollar industry in 221, and and this year we're looking at maybe bottom floor 1.3, right? I mean, it's 69 percent drop in in volume, and you can't have an industry that's running at even 80 percent of what it was. It's got to it's got to shrink. And, and that trend has saying. also been like you know the bigger players are going to get bigger, and and the smaller and midsize can't compete because you need a certain scale to really make a profit in, in, you know, in the IMB space. And so, yeah, it's certainly a, a challenge. So that's, but everyone's pretty confident that'll happen. Um, you know, I think as usual, first quarter earnings are going to tell us a lot. And, you know, when, when people, it, it's really, really hard for somebody who start, I, it, and this was said to me, one of the, the accountants that deals with some of these firms, you know, these are entrepreneurial type people that start these uh, IMBs or run them, and and uh, um, they're really invested. Many of them in them as as their whole lives, right? It's it's their life, and it's hard to give it up. It's hard to walk away from. <clears throat> so they're hanging on. They're going to hang on as long as they can. Um, but I think we are in, reaching the end of the rope. There, there, there will be some bump up in in originations if rates drop, of course. But who's going to get that business? Not everyone. You know, it's going to be the ones that are. Right, it's a zero sum game. Yeah. 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 So so that's ahead of us yet. And then the other thing to watch out for, and apparently the regulators are looking at this, uh, you know, uh, to some degree. Well, I know they are more than to some degree is uh, MSR valuations, which are really the asset on the books of the IMBs that, that you know, are the big thing. And they're they've already sent out a, a a memo saying that they're they're expecting anybody with with you know Fannie Freddie uh, um, MSRs to get third party independent valuations. They're not they need that from and most of the big firms are doing that. But the fear is it, it, to some degree that maybe the MSRs are overvalued, but they're they're also kind of volatile too. And the thing to watch is and this is you know the MSRs did really well in a rising rate environment because prepayments refis drop off drastically and that makes the MSRs more valuable because they have longer shelf life right well the opposite happens in a falling rate environment so you know we may have been up at multiples approaching 4 um at the peak of this thing you know a rate rise you know and they, maybe normally they're going to be two so that's a big drop if it happens now I, I haven't talked to all the MSR people yet. This is just starting and the rates haven't fallen far enough yet to really, you know, spark any kind of mini refi boom. But that is a, that is a potential uh, a danger out there, too, is that the, the, the prospects for increasing value of these MSRs is, is, is not what they were. It's probably just the opposite now. Calling all mortgage title and insurance leaders. With interest rates shutting down your refinance business, your relationship with your real estate partners is more important than ever. HW Media wants to help you deepen relationships and find success in this competitive purchase market by inviting you to attend Gathering of Eagles. Real Trends Gathering of Eagles is the real estate industry's premier event, bringing together leaders from the most successful brokerages in the country. 
For the first time ever, this closed event is open to our full audience. Check out the show notes to find out more or head over to realtrends.com to purchase your ticket today. And we know that in the market right now, there are a lot who are, who are looking to sell, right? They need to free up their cash position. And if the market's going to drop, as most people expect, you know, we're already past the peak uh, on MSR values. You're, you're, you've got a pretty limited window. And, and especially if you've been really light on cash, I know there are a lot of even publicly traded IMBs that have sold, you know, entire sections of their operations just to keep ticking. And MSR is, is, is really kind of the last thing they have, right? And so it's, it's, um, it's, it's a really, it's really tough sledding. And so the real question will be, will the increase in mortgage business, which really everyone wants, because uh, that, the origination side, make up or happen fast enough to offset any potential drop in MSR values? Um, who knows? I don't know the answer to that, um, but that's something to watch. Uh, those are kind of the tensions in the industry. But on balance, you know, the, you mentioned the word contagion. Everyone told me, and they, in fact, it, uh, one of the, the banking association uh, uh, executive directors went as far to say is the IMB, uh, IMB industry has been vindicated. Everyone was looking at the IMBs to be the big failure problem and they, and they are consolidating so maybe you know that but they're doing it more orderly than what happened with svv in many ways svv was what the the second largest bank failure in history and then signature was right behind that um you know the imbs that have gone out of business so far it wasn't pretty but it didn't rattle the industry like we're seeing in the banking side so far so right so and, and it hasn't led to structural questions right either. So that's what that's what they're they're saying, and it's kind of a, a you know maybe a chest pounding moment. It, but everybody knows you can't stand on that perch too long because things change too fast. So you got to keep moving. Um, and 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 I think the the, the long short of it is that the um, IMB industry is looking forward. There's there's light now. For, you know that whole cliche, a light at the end of the tunnel. You just hope it ain't another train. Well, you know, it, it's not, hopefully. This time, I think it really is daylight and, you know, something that they can run toward. But the question being, how many of them will be able to get their cost structures down to, you know, a, an appropriate level where they can still compete for business, right? Because a, a consumer doesn't care about your financial situation. You know, uh, they, they, they want good service. They want a good product. They want you to to do your job effectively and quickly. But if you need to cut half your workforce, depending on where you are, you know, it, it speaks a lot to the operational challenges that are still ahead for most of them, the vast majority. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're, it's, we're not, a, I agree totally. And that is, you know, there's always a note of caution with all this optimism, but we're not out of the woods completely. And, or they, the IMB industry is not out of the woods completely. Um, and, you know, the pro the, the, the ability to predict what's going to happen, um, Three months from now, you know, maybe that in the three percent environment of two twenty one, that was you know fairly you know easy or predictable. I don't think we can look a week out and be certain now in this environment. And that's the volatility factor. Um, we still don't know if the Fed fools everybody and does another bump. I mean, the markets will be on their ears, right? So uh, it, it's just it's just uh you know it, it's all a matter of perceptions and expectations right now. But if if the, the message I was getting, if you get your warehouse lines in order, make sure they're in order, make sure your MSRs are valued where they need to be so your, your books are working right, so you know what you have. Um, and the industry has to, you know, I mean, there's losers in a consolidation, but there's winners. I mean, a good consolidation of the right players makes both of them stronger in the long run. And there's always some layoffs generally around a consolidation or merger initially, but if it works, they grow and they hire back, right? And, and the market improves. They're, they're, you know, that's just the cycle, the boom and bust of this industry, unfortunately. And all of this is to say that this this is built on the idea that there isn't another, uh, you know, regulatory oversight or failure that leads to, you know, a crisis or or some other. You know, how many people were looking into, you know, the the rate of you know uninsured deposits, right, as, as a potential problem before it was a potential problem. You know, we've deregulated so many elements of our financial system, there could be other, you know, semi-hidden dangers out there. Yeah. I mean, one of them is the 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 bank, the liquidity programs that the, the Fed stood up 
to, to help with the bank failure stems the, um, you know, the kind of the bleeding or helps to stem the worry about the bleeding of deposits. They, these banks and still, for the most part, get some liquidity, but it doesn't solve the underlying problem, which is the uh, 600 billion plus uh, real unrealized losses that are on the books of banks due to, you know, bad investment decisions. They, they put, you know, uh, although they, they seemed at the time relatively safe. I mean, you're buying MBS mortgage backed securities and treasuries with deposit funds. And the, they, they were paying three, everything was paying and the deposits were zero almost right. No cost of funds. And you're making 3% or um, whatever, a little more, maybe here and there. Well, when the rates went up, all of a sudden all those bonds were underwater. And so all these banks are stuck with that and they still got to work that off their books somehow. Um, the recently yields, you know, bond yields have been, um, you know, dropping, which helps to, to boost the, but we're not going to, I've talked to the, the yeah. yeah, we're not going to rate rally out of this. I mean, that's what they, the, nobody thinks the banks are going to solve this problem with some kind of, um, you know, uh, bond rate, bond price, uh, increase that's going to solve it for them. So they, the, the, that's why the lending contraction is coming. They got to, it's good. They got to work the stuff off their books. They got to pull in their horns get their costs in order, um, the smaller regional banks. And that's why everyone is, not everyone, but Goldman Sachs, uh, you know, the, the, some of the bond rating agencies, the other experts I've talked to, they pretty much do believe we got a, a, a lending contraction, which will hit. I mean, the, 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 there's, there's a figure I didn't actually think was the case, uh, but these small regional banks account for, you know, in terms of mortgage lending, you know, a, appreciable slice of the markets. It's, you know, around half, right? I mean, the IMBs are a little less. The IMBs have the majority, but where's the rest? It's banks. Well, if the banks are tightening up, that also on top of the, the rate uh, uh, benefit, the rates dropping, you know, there's going to be some mortgage customers that don't qualify at the banks anymore that are going to be looking for loans still. And that yeah, might and be the one banks not stuff. Yeah, right. So go to, go to Wells Fargo and try to get a jumbo loan tomorrow. You know, exactly. go, go to JP Morgan Chase. It's it's not going to be easy. So the opportunists out there um, in a good way are going to benefit if they can figure out how to capture that 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 market share that's bleeding out of the banks. Um, so, yeah, it's a mixed bag. But, I, I you know, I think at least from covering this, uh, I think it's the, one of the more optimistic moments we've had since, um, you know, the rates went for the first quarter of last year and jumped three points in in a quarter and everyone got socked, you know, and, and the whole crisis, you know, the whole, I shouldn't call it a crisis, but whatever, whatever the volatility that we've been experiencing since uh, it, it appears to be maybe settling a little bit. There's some opportunity ahead. Well, maybe spring has sprung. And uh, as always, thank you so much for joining me, Bill. It's that, been, that's been that's great. that's actually what we said. You know, March did come in like a lion. It's supposed to go out like a lamb. And, and maybe maybe that'll actually happen for us, right? Maybe. Well, Bill, as ever, it, it has been great to catch up and, and hear, hear about your excellent reporting on the IMBs, the secondary market, and uh, and really the 2023 forecast. So thanks so much for joining me. And we'll, we'll catch you next time. It's good being here.